Welcome back to a long anticipated video. Today we're gonna put some new rotors and brake pads on the 2016 Volkswagen Passat. Now this goes for many other models. Brakes are pretty much the same. I've been doing them all of my life. Uh, I never pay for a brake job because it's ridiculous. But we're gonna change these out. I'm gonna show you how to do it. We're just gonna do the front driver's side rotor today and uh, pads. So we're gonna go through it in detail. Hopefully it'll help you. And if you'd consider subscribing, that would be greatly appreciated. All right, guys, let me show you the tools that you're gonna need to get this job done. Quickly here, we're gonna need a wire wheel of some sort. I put mine on a drill. We're gonna need just a few sockets. We're gonna need a seven millimeter hex, a T30 Torx, and a 21 millimeter socket. Pretty simple, pretty cut and dry. Also, grab yourself a torque wrench. Hopefully you have one to get things torqued down to the correct spec. You're gonna need your ratchet, your flathead screwdriver, a pair of wire cutters, a hammer would be nice, and uh, a smaller wire brush. You can get into the uh, smaller crevices to kind of get the loose dust and rust out of that. Some sort of lubricant. This is brake parts lubricant. This stuff seems to be pretty work pretty well. Definitely want some of that. Brake cleaner is essential. You're gonna need the spray as you go, kind of clean things up. You don't want loose particles laying around. And some blue Loctite and some silicone paste. Silicone paste is gonna be for the guide pins. I'll show you that when we get to that part of the video. Those are the tools you're gonna need. Not too bad. Most people have all of this. Uh, maybe not a torque wrench, but I highly recommend using a torque wrench. So I've already done some prep work. I have the car on a jack. Make sure you do that in a secure way. Look at your manual, whatever, but put it on jack stands for extra security. Uh, get that all done. Once you get your wheel off, you wanna go up under the hood and in the back there, you're gonna see where the brake fluid goes. That's your brake fluid, fluid reservoir. Just take that cap off, just loosen it at least. But uh, you want it to breathe because when we get into the brake job here, we're gonna be compressing the uh, the cylinders inside of the caliper and that allows that fluid to move back and forth. We'll show you that later. So back down to the wheel, you have a tension spring located on the front of the caliper. You just want to take a screwdriver and pop that out. It pops out pretty easily. Um, yeah, just, just put it in there and kind of pull out and it will pop out. Watch your face, be careful. Pretty easy to do. Okay, there it is. Notice there are two holes in the caliper. That's where the spring goes into. So just remember those. We're gonna be putting the spring back in when we're finished with this. So I just wanted to point those out so you knew where they were and what holds the spring in. Now it's time to start doing things here. So you wanna look behind the caliper. On the top here, you have a plastic cap. You just wanna pop that out. You can put a screwdriver in there if you wanted to, but there's also one on the bottom. So you have two of them, do one at a time, just pop that cap off. It's just the dust cap is all it is. Uh, yeah, so just get a screwdriver in there, try to pry it out, pop it out, and there it is. It's pretty easy to do. Yeah. All right, so do the same thing for the bottom one. I will say it's difficult doing this when you're trying to video this at the same time. So a lot of this is one handed. Yeah, I'm learning a new trick here. But anyway, get the bottom one off. It will pop off pretty easily. But hold on to them because you're going to have to put it back on when we're finished. Once you get the plastic dust covers off, you're going to get a seven millimeter hex. Okay, socket. That's going to fit into the guide pin. So just put it in there, it fits nice and snug. I did the top one first, you can do the bottom one first, it really doesn't matter. But uh, these aren't very tight or they shouldn't be very tight. It's only 22 foot pounds of torque if the last person did it correctly, which wasn't me. Um, I bought this car used. So it should be pretty easy. Just start cranking on it, take them out. There aren't a lot of threads, but uh, there are some. Do the top, do the bottom, and then you wanna wiggle those guide pins out. And I'll show you how to do that here. Okay. 
Now here you can see the guide pin starting to poke out. It wants to kind of stay in there, so you kind of maneuver it a little bit, get it. And these didn't seem very lubricated. See, it's kind of dry, a little dirty. We're gonna clean that up before we put them back in, and we're gonna lubricate them with that silicone paste that I was talking about. Or you can use dielectric gre grease, it's the same thing. As long as it's silicone based, because these are inside of rubber, uh, I guess it's surrounded by rubber, so you wanna make sure you put a, uh, a lubricant that doesn't eat away at the rubber, that's why we use silicone. So take the bottom one out as well, do the same thing. Uh, just watch the video here, pretty simple, pretty cut and dry. Get it loose, wiggle it out. And seriously, they can be a little stubborn, but again, I'm doing this with one hand. And if I can do it, I'm not the most coordinated person in the world. So if I can do it, I'm pretty much anybody can do this with two hands for sure. So once you get that out, just set them aside. Make sure you put them in a place that they're not gonna get damaged because you don't want any scratches or, or dents or anything on those guide pins. So now we can wiggle the caliper off. So just wiggle it, wiggle it. It's completely loose. It was just the two guide pins holding it on. So wiggle that out, okay. Now one thing, it would be nice to have a bungee cord or something with a hook. So you can hook this to the uh, suspension or whatever to hang it because you don't want to put pressure on that line that's your brake line you don't want to put pressure so hang them up there somewhere but for demonstration purposes i'm going to go with just laying it on top here so i can show you things um, i just want it to be right there so you can see it so i'm watching it i'm being careful but yeah i would highly recommend hanging them up to secure them anyway the brake the brake caliper here you have that pad pop that pad out it's held on with metal brackets uh, just to stay in there. It just pops right in there. They go. The new pads will be like that as well. So there you go. Those pads had a lot of life left on them, but I'm doing an upgrade here. I'm doing performance brakes. I'm not here today to talk about the brand or anything that I'm using. It doesn't matter. Whatever brand you're using is fine. I'm just showing you how to do a brake job on your Passat here. So now that we've removed the caliper and the pads, we want to take this additional bracket off. This is what's holding on the rotor. Two, two bolts, 21 millimeter, one at top, one at the bottom. So similar to what we did earlier, but much larger bolts. These things are going to be pretty tight. You're going to need some, some torque to get them off. So uh, you're going to have to work it. I'm going to need two hands here, but uh, I already loosened it so I could hold the video camera up here. But yeah, crank those out one at a time. There you go, and you can do it by hand once you get to a certain point. There are a lot of threads, though it is a lot of turning of that ratchet. But once you get those off, that bracket should just pop right out. So once your bracket's off, just lay it down. There it is. We're gonna clean it up just a little bit with the brush, just to get some of that excess rust and dust off of it. Okay, these Volkswagens have a set screw. A lot of different cars do as well, but that's your T30 Torx, but it's missing. Yep, it's missing. That's okay, it's not gonna hurt anything. I'm gonna go pick one up at the hardware store maybe after this is all done and put it back on. But this rotor's stuck, it's like rust welded. There we go, so I, that's why I needed the hammer to just bang on it a little bit. I'm not gonna reuse that rotor, so I'm not worried about damaging it, but sometimes it's good to knock that loose. So we see the rust here on the hub. We're gonna clean all that up before we put the new rotor on that. We want a nice, clean surface. So that's when you're gonna take your wire wheel and just go to town on it. Just get the surface rust off of it. You don't have to dig really deep or anything. Just get that surface rust off of it, clean it up. Back to that set screw missing, that's no big deal. All that does is hold the rotor in place so you can line up your lugs for your lug bolts. Uh, it gets the rotor just in the place that it needs to be, but 
you can do without it. But like I said, I'm going to go pick one up just because I'm OCD like that and going to make it right. But yeah, not a big deal there. I just wish I could have shown you the me taking it out. But anyway, clean up after you're finished wire wheeling everything. Clean it up with brake cleaner. Uh, it doesn't hurt anything. Just keep it away from the paint on your car if you can. But uh, yeah, just spray that throughout the brake job. Here are the new rotors. I'm going with some slotted rotors, guys. Uh, it's going to offer some more performance. They're heavy-duty rotors. Um, so we're going to put things on in reverse order. Everything's going to be the same. Now here, because I don't have that set screw, I'm just going to take a lug nut or whatever, and I'm going to put it in one of the holes just to hold it in until I can get the bracket secured. It's all about improvising. Once you get the rotor secured and back on, now again, it doesn't have to be tight. Just get it nice and flush. We're gonna put our bracket back on. That's our 21 millimeter bolts. So we wanna clean that up first. We're gonna take a wire brush. Um, this thing works really well. All the dust you can see coming up, it's just rust. Because we're gonna put lubricant in there. Those are the tracks where the pads actually slide back and forth. And you want that to be as smooth as possible. Uh, it helps with performance, functionality, and uh, it's just gonna be much better off. It's less squeaking, less noise. So again, once you do things like that with a brush, just take some brake cleaner, spray it off, it cleans it up really, really well. So let's put our bracket back on. We're gonna grab the 21 millimeter bolts. Now we're gonna take some blue Loctite. That's where this comes in. Blue Loctite is, uh, it's just gonna hold those bolt, bolts in there uh, pretty securely. They won't back out on you. Um, you don't wanna use the red Loctite. That's kind of permanent. So just use the blue Loctite. It'll keep them from rattling out. Put some on the threads. You want to use a semi-generous amount. It doesn't take much though, really. Just make sure you get it in the threads where they make contact. So once you get the lock cut on, just get them started. Put the bracket in place, line the holes up. Just get the bolts started. Hand tighten them down till you can't tighten them anymore with your hand. And then we're gonna go in with our, um, our ratchet and our 21 millimeter socket and tighten them down. Then after that, of course, we're gonna use the torque wrench. These are 89 foot-pounds of torque. Um, so if you have a torque wrench, put it on 89 foot-pounds, it's pretty heavy. I mean, that's that's a lot of torque. So these things get, get tightened down pretty, pretty good. And here, just to give you a closer look, I mean, we took them out, I showed you how to do that. We're just putting them right back in, one on top, one on bottom, that 21 millimeter, and uh, get them as tight as you can, and then grab that torque wrench and uh, crank it down to 89 foot-pounds. That's more than I thought they would be, but I looked up the specs on this car, it's 89. So yeah, grab your torque wrench, set it to 89 foot-pounds, tighten them down. It's that simple. I needed both hands to do it, so I didn't get that on video, but if you know how to use a torque wrench, that's what you do. So that's done. Now we're gonna go back to the caliper here. We wanna clean it up a little bit. And we also have to compress that cylinder all the way flush there so we can get both of the new pads on. Um, but I'm going to clean it up with a wire wheel a little bit, just get any of the loose, loose stuff off of it. I'm not going to go at it too hard. I don't want to damage the rubber around it. I'm going to clean it up with the wire brush as well. Um, just any loose stuff. You want to make sure, again, everything can move back and forth and slide really easily. Clean everything up with the, uh, with the, the brake cleaner as well. Here's where our lubricant comes in. Uh, it's purple. It, it, it'll go away. It's not going to make your brakes look purple forever or anything like that. But just get it on every place that moves. Uh, you're going to have moving parts, I guess. I'll make sure to put links for everything we used today in the description. Now it's time to grab a C-clamp 
there are brake caliper depressor tools that you can use. I always use a C-clamp. It works the same. Grab an old brake pad so you don't damage the new ones. Put it against the cylinder in the back of the caliper and then securely twist and turn until that caliper is depressed. This is why you want to release the, the brake fluid cap up in the engine bay because it allows the uh, caliper to breathe. And it's really not hard. You don't have to crank really hard on it. It compresses pretty easily, especially when you loosen the uh, brake fluid cap in the engine bay. So get your lubricant, lubricate everything that moves or has moving parts in it. Just go for it. It's not gonna hurt anything. Uh, the more, the better. So just make sure those surfaces are clean, like I showed you. Uh, spray them off with some brake cleaner. It does a great job. I put it on the face of this so it doesn't stick to the actual wheel, which is very common here in Texas because we have a lot of humidity and it creates a lot of rust. Now, typically you have these brake sensors on these Passats, but my Passat is, the, Passat is the base model. It doesn't have the brake sensors in the front. So what you do is you just take some wire cutters and just cut that right off. You're not gonna need it. It's like it was never there. So toss that. That's for the more fancy models. But anyway, take that, that's the new pad, put it inside there. It should seat right in there, just a little push. Once that's securely in place, go ahead and grab your other pad and put it in the front. Should just slide right in there. Make sure it's in the correct direction. There you go. It only fits one way, so you can't mess it up. There you go. Add a little lubricant to that because it will ride along the caliper. So once that's all lubricated, you're gonna put your caliper on. You got your back pad on. You got your front one sitting there. You're just gonna to have to put it together like a puzzle. Just wiggle it on. If it doesn't go on, that means you need to compress that caliper cylinder a little bit more. But uh, mine was fine. There it is. Now we have to put the other two bolts on. Those are your guide pins. Notice I cleaned them up. You just wanna wipe them down with some brake cleaner. Clean all the grime off of them. You wanna take silicone paste or dielectric grease, which is silicone based. You wanna rub it pretty generously, I guess, uh, along those, don't get it on the threads. You don't want it on the threads because you don't want it to back out on you. You just want it on the smooth part of the guide pin. All right, do that. We're gonna put them in one by one. And again, these things don't need to be very tight. They're only tightened down to 22 foot pounds. So we're gonna readjust our torque wrench when it's time to torque these down. So line your holes up, <clears throat> put your guide pins in, and it's that seven millimeter hex socket that we're using here. So crank those down one at a time. So when those are tightened down, just grab your torque wrench to make sure it's torque to spec, which again is 22 foot pounds. Very simple. And if you notice, everything's in reverse order here. We've already done this. So now you take your little dust caps, your little plastic caps, and just pop them right in. They just pop right in one at a time. That's it. Do the top one and do the bottom one. Now it's time to grab that tension spring. This is hard to do with one hand, guys. So I'm just gonna show you. Remember the two holes, okay? You put those pointy pieces in those holes, and then you just take a screwdriver and kind of pry it over in front of the caliper. So you just have to work at it a little bit. It's not hard. Just don't overextend it or bend it. It'll be fine. So that just holds everything in place, keeps it from rattling, keeps your brakes quiet, smooth. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Now what we're gonna do is, um, put everything back together. I'm not going to show you how to put the tire on. I'm going to do all that. 
We're going to do something called bedding the brakes. I'm going to have another video about that, so check it out. It's very important. Before you use these brakes on a regular basis, the first time you use them, you want to get out and bed them. It takes about 10 minutes. And don't forget to go up and tighten your brake fluid cap inside the engine bay. So once that's secure, you're done. That's the brake job. All four wheels are pretty much the same. So now I've taken the car for a stroll. I wanted to do some brake bedding and that's gonna be in the other video, but this is what the brakes look like after you bed them. The importance of that is to transfer the material from the brake pad onto the rotors itself. It's, uh, it's done through heat and extreme braking for about 10 minutes. I'll show you how to do that in the process involved, but it's well worth it. Your brakes will last longer and you will have much better performance. I'm a firm believer in it. I think it's very essential when doing a brake job. Guys, I wanna thank all of my subscribers for watching this video. I hope it helped you. Please leave some comments down below and I'll be sure to get back with you. Um, but as far as the brakes go, any type of rotors, any brand that you use, it's all the same job. I will leave a link to the brakes that I used for this job today in the description below. Just check out the description, click on it. You may like them. A lot of people use those brakes, but I don't like to say anything until I've used them for a while because my subscribers are important to me. So if you get a chance, check out the other videos that I have in the channel. Have a great day, everybody.